This video is brought to you by Brilliant. Death. It's a weird one. I still don't think that I've got my head around the idea entirely, but what I do know is what will happen to my body when I die, and to my atoms. And I say mine, but as with everything in life, ownership is merely temporary. It's almost certain that they've passed through a number of stars and millions of organisms before lending themselves to me. You see, when you die, your atoms won't just disappear or cease to exist. The law of conservation of matter states that matter cannot be created nor destroyed. And so long after you are dead, every single one of those 7 times 10 to the power of 27 atoms, or 7 billion 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 of them, will continue to be atoms. 99% of those being oxygen, hydrogen and carbon, with the majority of those molecules being H2O, aka the wet stuff, aka water. If you are cremated, then that water will evaporate into the atmosphere. Or if you have a good old fashioned burial, then that water will leach out into the ground. Either way, the vast majority of water will end up in the Earth's water cycle, which will eventually fall back down as rain and that will end up in rivers and lakes and one day, someone's cool, refreshing glass of water. And that water will be used in the process of photosynthesis, where it reacts with carbon dioxide and sunlight to produce carbohydrates and oxygen, with the latter being released into the air around us. Yep, that's right. You are constantly breathing in the atoms of dead people and you've probably even eaten some today too. When you eat plants and metabolize the carbohydrates in them, you create carbon and water, the foods that plants need. So when you exhale, when you excrete, and when you die, you feed the very plants that fed you and many others. And the process continues to repeat. Sometimes there's just so much beauty in the world. I... Sorry. When you're buried, your tissues and organs don't just rot away. They are consumed. Consumed by one of the very things that keeps you alive. Bacteria. <laughs> Your intestines are home to about 100 trillion very helpful bacteria that aid digestion, nutrient absorption, and other important processes that keep you alive. And whilst living, they are kept in check by your immune system. When you die and stop breathing, your cells stop receiving oxygen, but continue to produce carbon dioxide for several minutes. Carbon dioxide is acidic, and as it builds up, it ruptures sacs containing enzymes. Starting in the liver and brain, those enzymes begin digesting each cell from the inside out, producing a nutrient-rich goo. And now, with no immune system to restrict those 100 trillion bacteria, they can move freely throughout your body, consuming this goo as they go. After about three days, that bacteria will have spread throughout your body, producing and releasing gases that will make their way into the atmosphere. Carbon dioxide and water vapour are released, as well as incredibly potent greenhouse gases, like methane and nitrogen oxide. Methane being about 30 times as potent as CO2, and nitrogen oxide being about 300 times more potent. So no matter how many vegetables you eat, or how much eco-friendly washing up liquid you buy, 
your rotting corpse will inevitably add to climate change. And once all the remaining oxygen is used up, anaerobic bacteria, that is bacteria that doesn't need oxygen, get to work. It's responsible for the production of methane, but also hydrogen sulfide and ammonia, aka the stinky gases. And the gases that these produce will eventually end up in the atmosphere. And probably up someone's nostrils too. I smell dead people. How often do you smell them? Cremation is slightly different. As your body heats up to temperatures of around a thousand degrees Celsius, it starts to break down into its component parts. Hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon and sulfur all combine in various ways to form water vapour, carbon dioxide, sulfur oxides and nitrogen oxides. And all that's left is a pile of ash, which is actually, and quite unromantically, just fragments of pulverised bone. The carbonates and calcium phosphates in your bones make them really durable, and not even a crematorium can completely destroy them. Eventually these ashes, some way or another, will end up in the soil where plants will use them. Someone eats those plants, and the circle of life continues. And so each and every one of your atoms participates in this elaborate game of pass the parcel, weaving their way through countless organisms all over the earth. Well, most of your atoms do. Some of them go on a far grander journey. You see, spread within the earth are radioactive materials like uranium and thorium, Tiny amounts of these elements enter into the water system, which then enter our bodies via plants and drinking water. Most of these pass straight through us, but a tiny percentage of these elements are absorbed by our bodies. Radioactive elements decay, and a byproduct of that decay is helium. And as we all know, helium likes to go up. And believe it or not, Earth's gravity isn't strong enough to hold on to helium, and so it just continues up into space. Some of those helium atoms may get trapped by the Sun's or Jupiter's huge gravitational pulls, but just a few of them will continue to float on indefinitely, out of our solar system and into the galaxy. Just imagine an atom that once passed through your body might end up being part of a star light years away, or even part of an alien's body on some distant planet. An atom that was once part of you may one day be part of an alien's genitals. And I like that. But what about you? Would you like to be part of an alien's genitals? Or something else? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I've been Dom, and you've been watching my atoms. Oh, hello again. Uh, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. You've got this far, which I'd say is a real achievement. So, well done you. I thought it'd be fun to show you some behind the scenes stuff from the video, or butts, as I think you call it. Uh, but first, I wanted to show you this. Brilliant, the online learning maths and science people. And, and now for some sound effects. <laughs> They offer an awesome range of maths and science courses that are great for a wide range of abilities. And if you're just starting out, then you should definitely check out this course on scientific thinking to get you, well, thinking scientifically. 
Brilliant breaks each topic into bite-sized chunks and guides you through each course by encouraging you to solve a bunch of really fun problems along the way. This not only makes each course enjoyable and super easy to follow, but the way the courses are structured makes them easier to fit around all the other stuff in your life. So if you want to help me make more videos and you want to learn more about Brilliant, then head over to brilliant.org slash everything and sign up for free. And also the first 200 people that go and use that link will get a 20% off the annual premium membership. But you do have to use that link, that one I put here, here, in my mouth. Or uh, you won't work, it won't work. You will work. You, no one will, no one's gonna make you work. I just keep talking, don't I? Okay. Uh, that's it from me, so let's roll, but BTS, let's roll the BTS. Bye. Intro take six. This morning I'm filming a balloon. <laughs>